Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I am teacher Cheryl and in today's video we are going to be looking at a very common writing technique. Now why I've decided to do this video is because I've had quite a number of students come to me and they actually tell me that they know that they should be using the show not tell strategy to further improve their writing. However, they don't really know how to use it. So that's why in this video, I'm going to kind of go back down to the basics and really show you how to use this show not tell strategy. So first of all, what is show not tell? So the show not tell strategy is a very common writing technique, as I mentioned before. It's basically when you don't tell the reader what is happening, but what you do instead is to show the actions, the relationships, or the feelings of the character instead. So let's compare some sentences. He was angry. He slammed the door behind him and stormed off. Now, which sentence do you think is a tell and which sentence do you think is a show? If you said the first sentence is a tell, you are right. He was angry. Basically, you are telling the reader what the character is feeling. However, in the second sentence, it's more of a show because you're showing the reader that the character is angry using certain actions such as slamming the door and storming off. So you realize that even though the show sentence is a little bit longer, it is definitely more interesting to read because the reader will have to kind of infer from your story what the character is actually feeling. So in a way, you're kind of getting the reader to be a little bit more engaged in your writing or in your story. So let's take a look at another example. Now, this is taken from the book The Great Gatsby. It's written by Scott Fitzgerald, and I'm going to read the paragraph for you. In his blue gardens, men and girls came and went like moths among the whisperings and the champagne and the stars. The last swimmers have come in from the beach now and are dressing upstairs. The cars from New York are parked five deep in the drive. Floating rounds of cocktails permeate the garden outside. The lights grow brighter as the earth lurches away from the sun, and now the orchestra is playing yellow cocktail music and the opera of voices pitches a higher key. So this writer has actually used a lot of showing in this paragraph. What you can do right now is to pause the video here and try to identify all the showing parts in this paragraph. Okay, I hope you've done that. Now, let's take a look at the paragraph together. I have highlighted a few things in this paragraph. Let me show you what I have picked out. First of all, gardens, because it tells us that it's probably a really huge place because it's not just one garden, but it is many gardens altogether. Champagne and the stars. So this tells us that it's outdoors under the stars with lots of um, champagne as well. And champagne is something that's not exactly very cheap. So there's a clue there. Have come in from the beach. So we know that this place is probably very close to the beach as well because the people who are swimming, they are just coming in directly from the beach. The next one is part five deep. This tells us, first of all, that it's a pretty big place again because in the driveway, they can actually fit five cars in a row. There are also probably many cars in this driveway as well because it's not just one row, but many rows of cars in that same driveway. The next phrase that I've picked out is floating rounds of cocktails. First of all, cocktails are alcohol and it's definitely not cheap as well, and they're all floating around. So probably there are lots of cocktails being served all around the place. The next phrase is lights grow brighter. As we know, this place is somewhere outside, somewhere outdoors, so they need lots of lights as well. So you can probably imagine how uh, it looks like with lots of lights outside to illuminate the place. There is also an orchestra in this place. Imagine an orchestra is not just one person or a few people playing some music, but it's actually a huge group of people. And finally, opera. So opera of voices. Again, this tells us that there's lots of performers, not just one person performing. Okay, so putting all these clues from the paragraph together, what does this actually tell me? I can probably infer that it's a very fancy, dazzling party. There are many people, many cars there, and it probably is something very opulent or very luxurious because there is champagne, there's an orchestra, um, there are lots of cocktails as well. So it definitely sounds like a very luxurious party. So you can pause the video here and actually compare the differences. What the writer wants to tell us that it's a really luxurious party with lots of people and cars, okay? However, the writer didn't tell us that directly. He showed it to us by using different words or phrases in his paragraph. And that's something you should strive to do as well. So how do we actually do that? So let's get into tip number one. 
Tip number one is to use your five senses, but remove all sensory words. I know this sounds very contradictory, but because a lot of teachers, when they tell you to use um, show not tell, one of the ways to show not tell is to actually use your five senses. And your five senses refer to your sight, your smell, your hearing, your taste, as well as your touch. However, a common problem with this is students will just use the sensory words such as hear, see, smell, and so on. So if you look at my example here, I heard the sound of footsteps behind me. Even though this sentence uses one of the five senses, it's basically still telling the reader directly what happened or what you heard in that sense because of the use of the word heard. So in my tip, as I said, you can use your five senses but remove the sensory word. So we're going to remove the word heard in this sentence and let me show you my example sentence. The shuffling of footsteps behind me became louder. Now this is more of a show because I'm using the sound that I heard which is the shuffling of the footsteps rather than saying that I heard the footsteps. And I also kind of add a bit more information by saying that the footsteps became louder. So I'm describing the sound rather than saying this is what I heard in that sense. So let's try one practice. So what I'd like you to do is choose one of the senses and write down phrases about what you actually see, hear, smell, taste or feel, depending on which one you have chosen, and then put it into a sentence. Pause the video here, write down your sentence and share it with me in the comment box below as well. Okay, I hope you've done that. So I'm going to go through my example with you. So I have chosen the sense touch and some of the phrases that I came up with are scorching heat, biting cold, stinging my skin. So all these things are actually things that I would feel. For example, if I'm under, under the sun, I wouldn't say, oh, it feels hot. I would rather describe the scorching heat. So out of these three, I think I'm going to use stinging my skin. And my sentence is, the rain stung my skin as it pelted down unforgivingly. So here I'm showing my readers that it's probably very heavy rain and the raindrops are really big as well. So when it falls on me, it's very, very painful. Let's go on to tip number two. So the second one is to use emotions in your writing, but remove all emotion words. Again, it seems very contradictory, but let me explain. So emotion words are words like happy, sad, angry, and so on. So if you use any of these words, you're basically telling the reader what exactly your character is feeling, which is okay, but we want to improve our writing, right? We want to use that show not tell strategy. So a common problem is that students usually will do this. They will just say something like, I was so sleepy that I had dozed off. Once again, even though the sentence uses that emotion of sleepy, it is still telling the reader what exactly the character is feeling because of the use of the word sleepy. What we can do instead is to remove the word sleepy. So let me show you my example. My eyes grew heavy and my head slumped to the side. Now this is more of a showing because I'm not telling the reader exactly what I'm feeling, but I'm showing through certain actions. For example, my eyes grew heavy and my head slumped to the side. So this tells the reader that most likely this person has fallen asleep. So let's try another practice. What I'd like you to do once more is to choose one emotion and then write down some phrases or physical reactions to that particular emotion. Once you've done that, then put everything together in a sentence. Once more, you can pause the video here and share your sentence with me in the comment box below. Okay, have you done that? Now let's look at my example. So I have chosen the emotion of scared and some phrases that I thought of are heart racing, pick up my pace and tremble uncontrollably. So this time I'm going to use two phrases instead. I'm going to use heart racing and pick up my pace. So my sentence is my heart started racing and I picked up my pace trying to get home to safety as fast as possible. So in this sentence, I'm showing the reader that I'm feeling scared because my heart started racing and then I tried to walk a little bit faster because I wanted to get home to safety. Let's go on to tip number three. So here we have to use action words but remove weak ones. So what I mean by weak ones are words that are not specific enough. Let me first explain what action words are. So action words are words that, well, basically tell us an action. For example, read, sleep, run, swim think these are all action words. One common problem with using action words is that when we use action words, sometimes we are still telling rather than showing. Let me show you an example. She read the book excitedly. So again, this is telling the reader what she is doing, especially because of the word read. What I can do here is to be a little bit more specific. 
instead of the word read, I can change it to a more specific synonym. For example, she thumbed excitedly through the book. So notice how I have used the word thumbed instead of read, and it's definitely something that's more specific. And you can use this for many other types of action words as well. So for example, instead of using the word walk, I can say, um, I tiptoed into the room, for example. Let's try one more practice. What I want you to do is choose one action verb and then write down some strong verbs. Remember to be more specific and descriptive with your verbs and then put everything into a sentence. So once again, pause this video here and share your sentence with me in the comment box below. Let me show you my example. I have chosen the action verb speak and some of the stronger verbs that I have thought of are lecture, boast and suggest. Now my sentence is, my parents lectured me angrily because I came home really late. So let's review the three tips that we've gone through today. The first one is to use your five senses, but remove all sensory words. The second one is to use emotions, but remove all emotion words. And the third one is to use action words, but remove the weak ones. Let's go back to the Great Gatsby paragraph that we looked at right at the beginning of this video and try to identify if the writer has used any of these three tips in his paragraph. So here's the paragraph again, what I'd like you to do. Once again, pause this video and see if we can find any of the three tips that we have covered in today's lesson. Okay, so I have picked up two things. Let me show you what I have picked out. The first one is floating rounds of cocktails permeate the garden outside. Now this one is definitely the five senses. Because the writer is actually telling us what we can see. We can see lots of cocktails going around the garden. And of course, they're not floating around on their own, but there are probably some waiters carrying the cocktails around, serving them to the guests. Another one I've picked out is the word pitches. So if you look at the sentence, the opera of voices pitches a higher key. This is definitely tip number three, where we use a strong action word. Instead of saying the singer sing a key higher, the writer uses the word pitches, which is more specific. Okay, there are definitely more, but I'm not going to go through every single one. So your task for this week is to write one paragraph describing the first time you met one of your friends. Remember to use the show not tell strategy, specifically the three tips that we've gone through today, which is to use your five senses, but remove the sensory words, to use your emotions, but to remove all emotion words, and to use action words, but to remove the weak ones. Once you've done that, share your paragraph with me in the comment box below, as I'd really love to read what you have come up with. So what's next? I'd like you to continue practicing and applying these three tips to your writing. Once you finish with your writing, show it to someone because it's always good to get some feedback on your writing so that you know where you can improve on. That's it for today's video. If you found it useful, please give it a like and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Do also share it with your family or your friends who might find it useful as well. See you in the next one. Bye!